Hey all, my name is Tobes and this is Prehistoric Kingdom. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So this is going to be the first little guide that we're going to have on the channel. First of all, we're looking at the terrain painting options, foliage, uh, shrubbery, all of that sort of good stuff. There's quite a bit here actually, even though this is early access alpha. Pretty impressive stuff. Okay, so you have two real ways of doing this. It's quite interesting the way they've done this at the moment. As I said before, uh, this is early access alpha so potentially everything is is up for grabs uh, and changeable at this stage it may well change by the time it comes to beta it may well change by the time it comes to to live uh, so what we're looking at is we have this little button down here which is the terraforming option so we're going to focus mainly on the the substrate so this is effectively your painting option your terrain painting option and the vegetation areas in this first method. And this is how you kind of get get things kind of you know set up your biome if you like. So we have in the substrate option we have in each one we seem to have four main paint paintables at the moment. So you have these kind of little you know painting options, various different uh, terrain paints as you'd expect. Uh, and you'll see along the bottom here, you have all the different biomes. Now in the in the alpha at the moment, we only have the tropical, the wetland, the temperate and the scrubland available. And what is super cool about these is they actually blend together really nicely. I think there's a real there's a real thing in this game, which seems to be that it's much more like, I don't know, it feels much more kind of tactile painting it feels much more kind of you know channel your inner Bob Ross uh, because a lot of these textures work really well kind of together what you see up here as well importantly is a, a brush size so this is my this is making you know if I want to make big sort of sweeping changes to an area uh, I can obviously decrease that right down to a precise much more precise area but I've also got an intensity meter so obviously 100% intense, let's switch it back to grass for a second, 100% intense and you're going to kind of immediately focus a little patch in there. But what you can do uh, is blend these together quite nicely. I think this will probably get some, some minor tweaks, but yeah, that's a really nice way of kind of just getting, and obviously you can switch between the different and switch between the different terrain or uh, biomes to get you kind of different blends here so it takes a bit it's going to take a bit of fiddling to get used to this but you can start to see as you kind of mix the brushes up and mix these intensities that you can start to kind of create some ni quite nice blending options uh yeah so this is going to be really cool so that's kind of your, your initial kind of look at at the actual kind of paintables um, but then in terms of the tropical so this again works really interesting in terms of the actual vegetation stuff this is super super clever so again we have that concept of a brush so we're using when we're in this landscaping tool effectively we're using brushes so you're really painting at, at large scale here um, but what you get is there's a set of selections down here and again we have that that toggle between the different biomes but what's really nice here is that you can pick and add things to the brush so what you're doing is you're selecting items that you want to add to that brush so if I click now so let's just do let's do this fairly small but intense so you see those three things that I've chosen there those will all get used in my brush the game is going to randomly kind of generate slightly different sizes of those trees, for example, slightly different different sizes of the uh, the bushes, and it's randomly kind of scattering them around. And obviously, I can do that again if I switch the intensity, or sorry, the density in this case, much much lower. Then it's just kind of giving me a bit more space. And as I said, I can always kind of if I want to toggle those out, I can change out the things in my brush and continue to paint. 
So this I think is a really clever way that they've done this and obviously you can toggle between the different biomes and continue to kind of paint stuff in. So yeah it takes a bit of getting used to but I think that's going to be really clever like because if you wanted to you could select all of these and just kind of go look there's a there's a really kind of dense crazy area. Um, so I think to be honest my initial impression on this is that it's actually much more sort of approachable and easy to do kind of large scale coverage but but keeping it looking fairly random like you haven't spent an enormous amount of time on that so you need some work but uh i'll show you one i kind of made earlier playing around with this kind of you know, this swamp area this didn't take me an enormous amount of time but combination of those brushes and the, the thing that's in the second step that i'm going to show now so yeah the brush lets you go right down to specific tree for example if you want to so i can turn this up to maximum density smallest size i can place down a single tree if i want to and you see the game is giving those some differences and some randomness not an enormous amount of randomness but a little bit the alternative is to use the modular pieces now this is super interesting again because they've separated these they've these are effectively our building tab so in the building tab you also have trees shrubbery rocks and sticks gardening so not loads in here but as we, as we see we'll get these added to and again i have the same you know groups of plants here but what's interesting in these is that these are now effectively single placeable objects so I can place these down. So I can really, what I could kind of do really is replicate the same thing that I had going on over here in my brush, but over here. So I'll show you how you do that. So you kind of just, we just kind of create a little, let's just say we want a couple of, I don't know, a couple of little bits and pieces and we'll just have, um, we'll have a rock for example. Now that's going to look a bit uninspiring at the moment but I can pick that up and this is now my brush so I can use that obviously that's going to get pretty repetitious if I do that frequently I'm not sure repetitious is a word but it seems like it could be and then I can you know I'm now building up my own brushes now what you can also do with this amazingly and this is so so amazing that they've they've managed to get this done let's say i want to build another one i'm going to build another little kind of palette object here i have now all the controls available to me within the modular build set so i can actually go by pressing v and using the scaling edit i can scale this tree and i think this would be there'd be an, there'd be an, uh, an advantage to them adding kind of a uh, scale by proportion option we don't have that at the moment so stuff is quite easy to end up distorting uh, but I think that will probably come at some point in the future so let's just say let's just say I want to do that for example right so I haven't I've just scaled that object it's probably a little bit distorted still so just give it a little bit of a tweak what I can now do is I can place that down I can select this op this option over here, which is a little a little subtle. There's no tooltips or anything on these yet. Select this option that says Keep Object Scale. And what's that? What that's going to do is it's going to take into consideration the scaling that I've just done of this object and apply it to the next thing that I pick. So you see that I mean it looks a bit distorted, and it's going to take a bit of getting used to how this works. But that's the logic of how the how this building mechanics are working. As long as I keep that selected, it's going to apply that proportion of, of resizing to all of these objects. I'll just show you that again. So if I just do this, let's just pop that rock down, for example, right now, and then untick that object. I select the same rock. See how that's the same rock, but it's it's taken away that that resize I've done of it. So what you really end up with is the ability to be able to massively build your own kind of brushes and uh, tools to use and I'm just kind of clicking and dragging and very quickly can kind of start to get you know, my own little my own little brushes that I can build up so yeah this would take some time to get kind of into I think but 
definitely the advantages of it and combining it with these things so the combining it with the actual the actual brushes yeah you can start to get some really interesting and easy easy to do um dense foliage i think it's all probably needs a little bit of a tweak in terms of the visuals and stuff uh at some point but for now i think this is super super impressive you can also um in terms of getting rid of the trees as well and it's, it actually says tree removal but it's a it's a removal brush for anything that's a terrain object it won't remove anything that's a you see it's not removing my modular build pieces there so yeah the first little look at this i think this has got some super super cool you know stuff and things you can do with it loads of things to be doing uh, we'll definitely be looking loads more at this stay tuned for those my name is taves 